So applying for a loan and getting a mortgage can be a fairly tricky process. There's so much terminology and things to consider that it can be overwhelming for you, especially if you're new. So what do you do? You go to a mortgage broker and you put all of your faith and all of your trust into them. So hopefully they can find you a good deal for your situation. But to protect yourself and choose the right broker, what sort of questions should you be asking them? Hey guys, welcome. My name is Faizy. If you're new here on this channel, we look at Aussie personal finance. And today we're looking at top four questions to ask your mortgage broker. Now, before we start, I just want to say that we are talking from a general sense only. I'm not trying to give you any specific financial advice. I'm literally speaking from experience because I have personally worked as a mortgage broker and dealt with hundreds of customers across Australia. And these are some of the things that you should be asking. Number one, why is this loan the best product for me? Now, home loans come with different features, benefits, disadvantages, and costs. So let's say that your goal is to pay off your mortgage as soon as possible, and you are planning to pay extra as well. Your loan product may be different to someone who just wants to pay a set repayment and doesn't want to pay extra. So you as a new borrower, you probably have no idea about any of this. And all of a sudden you apply for a loan and you're just expected to know all of this. There's new data which shows that over 40% of first home buyers were not fully confident in understanding if the loan they chose was even best suited for their needs. So this is actually more common than you might think. So this is where your broker comes into play. They should be able to effectively explain why this product fits your needs and objectives. Now just keep in mind that they can only explain things to you if you have been fully transparent with them in the first place. So when explaining your situation to them, be upfront so they can find the best solution for you. There's nothing worse than hiding something then that thing comes up later on and causes issues down the track and you end up wasting your time your energy and the broker's time, energy and potentially money as well. Now, equally speaking, if you have been transparent with them, told everything about your situation and even then they can't explain simply why this product fits your needs, then that's a red flag. After all, we are putting our trust in brokers by giving our bank statements, ID, personal information to do the right thing. And all we want is peace of mind, knowing that we're getting the right deal. So it's very important that your broker can explain these things to you. Question number two, how much experience do you have? This is very important because you as the borrower need to know how many customers they've dealt with in the past, how long they've been doing their job for and what their background actually is. Because if you look into it, the entry requirements to be a broker are set very low compared to other jobs out there, especially if we look at educational qualifications. You don't really need a finance or business degree to be a broker. In fact, you don't need any degree at all, but you do need a certificate and a bunch of other things. But basically people as young as in their early 20s can do this job. Now, generally speaking, someone who's been doing this for decades versus someone who's only been in the role for like six months will have much more experience. They would have dealt with many more customers, dealt with complex situations, and they know how to easily navigate around that. Now, that's not to say that advice from someone who is young is completely worthless and they should not be given a chance at all. It's just that they have dealt with less people early on in their career and it's just stats. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that if your situation is a bit different or a bit complex, and if it's like a tricky situation, it's best to go with someone who has had lots of experience because in that scenario, it's the best thing for you. And of course, do not be afraid to ask if they have dealt with other customers who are in a similar situation to you and how your broker has helped those customers as well, especially if your situation is quite complex. Generally speaking, a lot of brokers will have a degree or like a banking background or worked in the finance industry, whatever it might be. If you as a customer value a finance degree or formal education in your broker, make sure you ask that question and get the peace of mind for your own self. Because as borrowers, we want to feel confident knowing that we picked the right broker. Question number three, how many lenders do you have on your panel? Now, the financial sector in Australia is quite huge. It's actually the largest. There are so many different banks in Australia, apart from the big four. You've got second tier banks, even neobanks recently, but banks are not the only institutions that lend money. You've got credit unions and non-bank lenders as well. Now, as you would have seen with the Royal Commission into the banking sector, we can see that the general public has lost confidence in the big banks and you might even be one of those customers. So speaking from that perspective, it's very, very important that your broker has a good mix of lenders from big banks to small banks, neobanks, even credit unions as well. The other reason is that, well, 
we need brokers to be our eyes and ears in the market. Since these guys deal with the banks almost daily, they know firsthand which banks have the good deals, good discounts, good application processes, and the more lenders they have, the more confident we can feel that we're getting a good deal. Also, this is quite similar to question number two, but ask how much experience they have dealing with that specific lender. Because different banks have different processes, some are more tedious than others, some have horrible processes, some just take very, very long. There's been cases where banks have taken over 30 business days to even look at your application. This is very true. And your broker should know about this so they can inform you as to what you're in for. A big range of lenders also helps if, for example, you need the highest possible borrowing power to buy your first home. With some banks, your borrowing power will be less. With some, it'll be a bit high. So a good mix of lenders is never bad. And lastly, if your situation is unique, not every single bank has the risk appetite to deal with your scenario. There are some banks which will not even tolerate even one late repayment, while others may be a bit more accommodating. Again, the more lenders a broker has, the more flexibility there is to choose. Now, last and final question, question number four, what commission do you make from my loan? Now, usually banks compensate the broker directly when your loan settles. The broker's service is free to you, but some brokers may still charge you a fee, so just watch out for that. Now, the reason why we ask this question is because we want to know how transparent our broker actually is. Because keep in mind that different banks pay different rates of commission, so we want an honest answer. And basically, we want to make sure that the product they have recommended is the right product for us, and they're not pushing a product onto us just because they are making higher commissions out of us. There's nothing wrong with the broker making commission from the loan because after all, they do all the hard work for you, but the number one priority is for the broker to do the right thing by the customer. Now, if they can't give you a straight answer, this could be a warning or even a red flag because this could potentially mean that if you end up going with them and they have some sort of bad news to give you or if they make a mistake, that lack of communication could come up again and cause issues down the line. Because just remember, the loan process takes many days, many weeks, sometimes even months, so if they can't be transparent or give that proper communication to you, that could be worrying. So we really need someone who's a good communicator that makes us feel satisfied. So there you have it guys. Hopefully now you can ask these questions and feel confident that you are getting the right deal. Brokers do add a lot of value in the whole application process, but as borrowers, we need to be at peace with our choice. Speaking of value, if you found any in this video, please like or subscribe. It really helps out. More videos coming on Australian personal finance regularly, so stay tuned. Thanks, guys. Okay, not bad.